You know, I've been very, very active today. Recently, I just posted a video of crying Impact Wrestling fans over Impact Wrestling losing and giving up the Impact's broken gimmick. I'm just drinking it all in. And yeah, my video certainly was a pipe bomb, if you know what I mean. So, what brings you on here, Patrick? What brings you on for a fourth time? You've been very active this week. Well, you've been very active today. 2K18 rant. Well, 2K18 review. Dragon Ball Super review. Then you've done another WWE video. What more could you possibly have on your mind now, Patrick? Well, there's been a lot going on in my mind. So I thought today I'd perform to you guys another top 10. 10, 10, 10. Previously, oh, previously when I did this, I did a, I did a top 15, my favorite legendary Pokemon. So I thought of doing a top possibly five, I'd say top five, on the, on Pokemon movies, the Pokemon movies, as you all know, the animated movies. And uh, I've got quite a lot, I've got, I've got quite a lot sitting on uh, my, uh, my, my wardrobes up there, if I'm going to turn the camera over. You see the, the little wardrobe up there? You know, the you know the little Rob Van Dam thing above there? Yeah, I've got a lot up there. I've got a lot up there. So that's why I was thinking, I'm like, huh. You know, as I was looking at them, I was like, you know what? There are a lot of good movies up there. Maybe there's a strong possibility I could do like a top five. Maybe not top ten, because not all of them are going to make the list. Not all of them are going to make the list. So anyway, guys. I'm going to pull my camera back just a bit. So what I'm going to do, since, since I'm going to be picking out all the movies that are up there, I am going to be picking out my top five favorite Pokemon movies from up there. So... And I'll see you guys in I'll see you guys in just a moment. Okay. Thought a lot about it. Thought 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 long and hard about what are these movies? These five movies that I've chosen. Now, because I've got them on since I've got them currently, so I can just show off the cover of what movie it is. And I also set them in their specific order, so I know what's 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The reason why I'm only doing 5 is because, you know, I've got quite a lot of movies up there, and I really don't want to do 10 or 20, because that would just be too long. And me trying to remember everything in the movie, eh, my memory's not really all that good. I've only got a good memory on certain movies, if I've watched them enough times for me to remember. And if I haven't watched them in a long time and I still basically remember what happens in these movies. So anyway, let's talk about the fifth entry. My fifth coming in at number five is the is the ever so popular, one of my first favorite movies as a young child, Pokemon Heroes from the Johto region where they introduced Latios and Latias. You know, this movie was a very interesting movie, as, as I'll read it to you on the back here. It says, all the action-packed excitement of your experience. The movie theaters comes home in, in this dazzling full, 
full-length motion pictures that pro that introduces Latios and Latios, two brand new Pokemon stars who who propose the remarkable powers. Join them along with your favorite characters on the greatest Pokemon adventure ever in in the magical wa in the magical water city of carnivals and mazes. Ash, Pikachu, and the rest of the gang face off against a slick pair of thieves who plan to steal the awesome and dangerous dual guardian by Latios and Latios to save the city from, from total destruction our heroes must defeat the evil duo to, over, to overcome the impossible obstacles but time is running out pa packed with non-stop thrilling or swinging adventures and, and, and characters Pokemon Heroes is a movie adventure you, you're sure to cheer not sure what that, not sure what that word said, but, but yeah, this movie is actually a very exciting movie. This was like my first, this was like my first favorite as a young child. There were a lot of Pokemon movies I enjoyed as a child because you know I was a child. So what do you expect? As a child, you would expect that from a child to really enjoy anything, any type of Pokemon movie. If you're a Pokemon fan, you would expect that. So. So yes, number five is Pokemon Heroes. Now, I'll explain some of the story, so that way people can understand, in case if people are wondering, why is this your favorite? We might not understand these movies, so please explain us some of the story. Okay. If I remember right, the, the city that they're in in that movie is called Artema. Or the Guardians of Artema, which was Latios and Latias. And... Basically, they basically at this point in the series, Ash and friends were still in Johto, as you know, Misty and Brock were in the movie, so they're still in Johto. This was how they introduced Latios and Latios. As an adult now, I can easily say the reason why they had Latios and Latios in this movie was their way to tease that Ash was heading out to another region soon, because I think that's a good way to send Ash off to another region. Meeting and meeting two Pokemon they've never met before, and there's this evil duo. This evil duo, not an iconic, not an iconic duo, but two duos. Uh, I believe their names were Annie and Ogly, who wanted to take the Soul Dew, so that, that way they can control over Ultima with its power because it has dangerous powers that can you know control the world and you know you can do all sorts of crazy things so that's the basics that's the basics parts of the movie ash stumbles into a girl that does not talk and then ash sees the same girl again but this time she does talk ash is very confused and then he sees the girl that doesn't talk and then he chases her all the way into some kind of garden garden and then and then they both, then these two humans, Bianca and the old dude, which I can't remember his name off my head, they explain to him that this girl is Latias. And Ash is confused. So he's like, Latias is a Pokemon, right? And then this girl changes into this red flying thing with rings. So, 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 so yeah. So, so yeah, that's basically what the movie was about. Like, Latios had the ability to switch between humans. Latios had the ability to, uh, what was that? What was that ability he had? Sight sharing. That's it. He had sight sharing. Like he could share, uh, what sights are around him. So he can share some sights that are around around him, and they and also Latios and Latios had the ability to turn invincible to protect themselves from being seen so that's so, so, so they can do that as well by the end of the movie Latios and Latios use their powers to stop this big tidal wave coming into the city and they use their powers to stop this to stop this tidal wave from coming in and and at the end of the movie because of the tidal wave Latios sacrificed himself to save the city so Latios passes away and Latias becomes the new guardian. So that's basically that movie in the nut. That's basically that movie in the nutshell, and that's why this movie hits number five on this list because it's a very good movie. 
it's a very, very good movie, and I really did enjoy it. The number fourth movie on my list goes to a movie that I think is quite underrated, but I think it's a good movie nonetheless. This one is Kiram versus the Swords of Justice. Now, in case if you're unaware on what this one is, this one's actually a very interesting. This one's very interesting. On the back says here, it says a new challenge. A new challenge. During a trip, du during a train trip, Ash and friends spot an injured Pokemon. They don't. They don't recognize. They plan. They planning a rescue. When when the train is attacked by the legendary, Kyram or Kiram, however they pronounce it. Ash and the others manage to get get the unfamiliar Pokemon to safety and learn about its story. The mythical Pokemon Kaldeo is on a mission to rescue its friends, Cobalion, Terrakion, and Verizion, the Swords of Justice from Kiram's icy clutches. But Kiram has other ideas, and it, and it uses its transformations into Black Kyram and White Kyram for greater power. Things look grim. Can Caldeo find the courage to stand up to this mess? And I'll tell you what, this is actually a pretty good movie. I really do enjoy uh, Kyram's voice. However you pronounce the, however you pronounce it, that's totally that's totally up to you. However you pronounce it, it's either Kiram or Kyram. However, how it's pronounced, I think it's Kiram because it's got an e. So, 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 so. The thing that I like about this movie is that at the start of the movie they introduce Caldeo, which is, as I said, is a mythical Pokemon. And it wants to become a Swords of Justice, just like Cobalion, Verizion, and Terrakion. And it foolishly goes ahead and challenges Kira, which I believe how it's pronounced. And, and I really, really like, I really like Kiram's voice. Because as you know, legendary Pokemon do tend to talk in these movies because they want to, you know, make it more realistic that Pokemon can talk. I like Kiram's voice. You dare to challenge me. He's got that cool, deep voice. He's got that cool, deep voice. I'm a Sword of Justice. Sword of Justice? Okay. Yeah, it's, it's so cool. And, and then Terrakian and all of them arrive. And they try to stop Kiram. They try to stop um, Kyram from attacking Caldeo. But then, as I said in the back, as I read it to you, he turned them into ice. And Caldeo ran away. And then, before the movie starts, Kiram's final word before the official movie starts is, This battle is not yet over. I really like his voice, man. It is so so cool. I like those I like those deep medicine voices. You know? It's just so cool. So then then as it said, Ash and friends do learn more about its story and what and what's been going on. That it's more like it, it the movie's more like let's run away from Kyrum. That's basically what all this movie was. That's basically what all the movie was. They were just running, 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 running from Kyrum until they could get to his um, uh, battle arena to get to Cobalion and Co to Cobalion and the others. So that's basically what that movie was about. It's basically, let's run away from Kyrum. That's basically what it, all the movie was. And then um, they save, then they save um, Cobalion and, and all them. And somehow Cobalion knows their name. Well, Ash's name. Apparently he knows Ash's name. Or was it Verizon? I think it was one of the two. One of the... It was one of the two. They, uh... They, somehow they knew Ash. Somehow, somehow they knew Ash's name. Okay, I don't know how that works. But in the end, Caldeo does fall in defeat to Kiram. But Kiram shows respect to him in the end. Because he, he actually had the courage to finally, to finally take the challenge. And also he protected his friends... Where one of its attacks went to hit them. So, so he, so, so, Kyram did win the match, but I think he gave respect to Caldeo in the end. So, and then they do the whole Swords of Justice thing at the end. One makes one is two, one two is two is makes is three, what three makes is four. We stand together and we are the Swords of Justice. I think that's how it went. 
So that is why this movie took, takes number four. Because this movie is a joy to watch. It's a joy to watch. And the other thing I really liked about the movie is that Ash didn't have any any random people. They didn't have random people, you know, helping them. They, they were actually helping somebody for once, which is something I really, really do appreciate. So, next movie. All right, taking the number three spot on this list is a movie possibly the... I wouldn't say one of the best, but possibly maybe the best of the Cine region. It is none other than Arceus and the Jewel of Life. So here's, so here's the cover here, and on the back it says, The struggle for time and space begins again. The legendary Pokemon Arceus. It's actually a mythical Pokemon. Long ago, Arceus granted a, a infringement of its awesome power as the Jewel of Life to help Mi Michelina? That's not that's not the person's name. In the in the in the town's hour needed only to be betrayed when it was the time was right and the power to be returned. After so many years, Arceus is about to return to reclaim the stolen power in raid and, and seemingly unstoppable. Not even the combined might of Dialga, Palkia and Garatina can stop can stop can stop Arceus from its devastation that de 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 devastation. But Ash and his companions join forces with their new friend Sharina. Sharina may have discovered the only way to re to redeem the the ancient betrayal. Their journey will be both dangerous and uncertain. Even if Ash and friends can set the can set the wrong right again, will there be time enough to return the Jewel of Life before Arceus destroys everything and everyone they'll ever know? Okay, now, I don't... Okay, I don't know who this... Michalina is. But that's basically not who the person was in the movie. The person that Arceus gave the Jewel of Life to was Damos. Was a man named Damos. Maybe the person on the back was that guy who... Basically... Ba ba basically... In the movie, they explain it. Basically, in the movie, they explain it. That Damos said... That he really was going to return the Jewel of Life to Arceus. But then obviously this uh, Michelina, Michelina person was the one that took that, that, that tricked him. I think, that's I think that's basically who that person was supposed to be. But um, maybe, that, maybe that's who that person was. Because I remember there was this redhead figure dude and he had the Jewel of Life. And he was the one that was going to prevent... Um, Arceus from returning the Jewel of Life. So I think it was going to be him. Uh, Arceus, and people are going to say, does Arceus have a cool voice for you to to, uh, to, to, uh, to uh, mimic for us? I think his voice was kind of like, it's time to return the Jewel of Life. I think that was his voice. It, 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 it was actually pretty cool. It's time for justice! Yeah, that was the one. That was the one. It sounded a lot like uh, it sounded a it sounded a lot like somebody. I think it's from Super. I'm not sure. Well, we haven't seen the English dub of Goku Black Story yet, so maybe kind of remembers a bit, but I'm not sure yet. But uh, but 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 um, yeah. Basically, this movie was that they were going to go back in time to right this wrong, so then that way Arceus can prevent can stop being so angry. But the thing I don't understand is. Is that this is supposed to be from another timeline? Wasn't this supposed to be from another timeline? Because Damos called Ash and his friends. He called them future kids. Children from the future or something. He called them people from the future. Or children from the future. I can't remember the one. He references them as children from the future. So... How so? How is Damos technically in this universe? Did he die? Is that basically what happened? And is that the reason why Arceus caused all this drama? I found it really, really odd because when they return back to the real world, Arceus is still causing trouble, 
And then it's only then he finds he re recognizes Ash. So maybe they went back in time, back to when it happened in their universe. That's possibly that's possibly the explanation I can think of there. But yeah, the movie itself is a very very good movie. So that is why I really really enjoy that movie. Okay, number two and number one coming up and I probably cannot wait for people to have a go at me because they're probably expecting me to be biased so here is the number two this is my number two favorite movie generation three oh, of course shush generation three this is possibly my second best favorite movie from generation three they I think each generation had four movies. Had four movies. This is my second favorite. This is my second favorite one. It is called Bacario and the Mystery of Mew. Now this one uh, was portrayed. This movie was actually it was actually my favorite until number one came in, which is something you gotta keep an eye on. And this one, again, was a way to hint them that Ash was heading out to another region. Which which I'm going to basically say right now, this movie and the next movie that's number one were two movies that hinted that Ash was going to another region. So let's read the back of it. Oh god, the text is a little bit smaller, so it might be harder for me to read. So anyways, anyway, it basically says here... Whoa, okay, that's kind of hard to read. <laughs> In the present day, I guess I'll try and read it from here. In the present day, Ash and his friends Pikachu, May, Brock, May, and Max are all traveling through the through the countryside. When they arrive at the Comeril Palace, a festival is being held in honor of, of Aaron, and a Pokemon tournament. In a, in a Pokemon tournament, gives Ash an opportunity to be named as Aura Guardian. That was it. For, for the event. Ash wins the tournament. No surprise. And is presented with with Aaron Stark. But during the party festival, fa famous adventurer named Kid Summers tries to capture the Elis the elusive Mew and Pokemon and Pikachu is injured. Mew flees taking Pikachu with it. When Lucario is released from a Aaron Stark, Ash enlists its help. Determined to find Pikachu. Together with Lucario, Kid Summers, and his friends, Ash embark an epic journey to follow Mew to the Tree of Beginning, rescue Pikachu, and uncover a country's old mystery. Yeah, this text was actually pretty hard to read. I'm not going to say because... It, I'm, well, I'm actually going to say because... Just look at the just look at the text. Can you, can you see the text? Just look at the damn text. It's so freaking small. It was just hard to read. So, yeah... So yeah, this movie was my second most favorite, and it still is. Why? Why do you think it's called my top five? Um, I'm not saying I'm not including movie I Choose You, the new movie that came out, because I haven't seen it yet, so I can't include that one yet. But I have heard stories about it. So what's this movie about, Patrick? What What What's this movie about that makes you so happy that to, to talk about it? Well, like I said, it's one of my personal favorites. Number one is my overall personal favorite. Number two, this is with number two. I was originally thinking of doing this as top ten, but I changed my mind, so I put this at number two. Basically, as you know, Ash and friends went to some kind of festival, and they found this, and they were doing this as a, or a guardian, you know, all that thing, I, all that shit I just read on the back, and they wanted, and Pikachu got captured by Mew. So, oh, and Meowth too, but you know, they just mentioned Pikachu only. So Ash and friends all go on this journey, and they have Lucario. Lucario is very, very bitter. Very, Lucario is very, very untrusting of Ash. So, in typical fashion, when Pikachu goes missing, uh, May and Max both ask both ask the simple question, saying, "What were what were your relationship with Pikachu like?" So, then Ash mentions when was the first time that Pikachu, you know, started listening to him. And then Lucario, 
Lucario has also got a good voice, guys. I'm gonna voice him very soon. He says he said he says that whole typical uh, thing, you know, when when you know when when because Lucario got abandoned by, well, deserted as what he called it. He got deserted by Sir Aaron, which was the man's name I mentioned in the back. And because he sees Pika, because he sees Ash without Pikachu, he reckons he deserted Pikachu. So so in his cool Lucario voice, he says. You humans are all alike. You can't be trusted. So yeah, he's got he's got that cool voice as well. I don't know why. I think every time there's a cool Pokemon voice, I should just mimic that voice. So so yeah, Ash and Lucario get off the wrong foot. Thankfully, May was around to break up the fight because I think it would have gone completely crazy. She was the only one that actually had the guts to go up to them and just break them up, or more likely break Ash up. So she just pulled him away. So just, just to leave it alone, just wa don't worry about it. And apparently Ash catches a cold because they were fighting in the water. Wow. So, as the journey continues on, they find a time flower which shows what happened when Sir Aaron betrayed them. And then, a then Ash just goes up to Lucario. He apologizes for his actions from last night. He, he, he says, sorry, I doubt it. Sorry that I doubted you. I didn't mean what I said. And, a and then Lucario's like, Promise me you won't deserve Pikachu. And, and then they both agree to go on there. And what a surprise! Legendary Pokemon. There can't be a Pokemon movie without Legendary Pokemon. Regirock, Regice, and Registeel, not at the same time, but they are in the movie. They attack, they attack Ash and Company. They attack Ash and Company along the way through the Tree of Beginning. I don't know why, but I really felt like this movie was really, really important. It was just so much action. That's what I like about Pokemon movies. If there's a lot of action, I will greatly, greatly enjoy it. So that's why this movie was one of my favorites because there's a lot of action, and also a few sad, a couple of sad moments where Ash and friends all got eaten by these uh, goopy things when they eventually found, when they eventually found Pikachu. Well, actually, Ash and Lucario and Kid Summers found them, and then. And, and, and then and then and then Reggie still like like an RKO from out of nowhere grabs Lucario into a bear hug, and these other gooey things come from behind like really su super mega ultra quick, and then they grab then they then they grip, grab Ash and a Ash and Kid Summers as well. So and then by the end when they found Mew, Mew brings everybody back to life. Technically, technic technically speaking, because that's exactly what happened. By telling the goopy stuff just to release everybody out because they're not bad germs. Because that's technically what those things were. Those things that were eating everything were like germ seekers. Like, like if there's anything around that's really disgusting, they think it's germs. So then I guess Ash and friends haven't had a shave in so long. Oh, that's right. They're all supposed to be 10 years old. Oh, right. That's right. It's an alternate universe. They don't age. So, how could they possibly stink? But oh well. But oh well. And then at the end, Mew falls sick. Mew falls sick, and it's up to Ash to give it to give it strength. So he and Lucario work together to give it strength. And then Lucario nudges Ash out of the way, and he takes care of the rest. And Mew gets the power to save the tree of beginning. And also, this unlocks Lucario to die. Because he wants to be a Sir Aaron. Because Sir Aaron was in the same spot where was in that specific spot in an ice cube. Because he gave up his life. He gave up his life to save Mew, and Lucario did the exact same thing. And I don't know how and I don't know how May and the others got out of that tree got got out of that tree in time, because it was incredibly it was absolutely insane how they got out of that tree while it was corrupting. Very odd indeed. But overall it was a great movie. I really did enjoy that movie. Okay, this video has been going on for 24, 29 minutes, but this is going to be the last one, guys. The number one slot goes to, here we go, guys, my overall favorite movie of Pokemon. And before you people ask me, it's like, oh, will you revisit these one day? Maybe. When I watch Pokemon I Choose You, the movie, when I, well, when I eventually do, I'll give my overall thoughts on that. And I'll see if it makes my top five list or not. So, anyway, guys, my number one favorite movie, and it still is to this day, Pokemon Ranger and the Temple of the Sea. Oops, you didn't see the title. Hey, hey, 
This is my favorite one. Okay, let's read the back, as I always do. On the back it says, It's all started with a legend passed down from the from the people of the water. That's that was what that that's what I was trying to remember. Somewhere in this world there's an exi <laughs> Somewhere in this world there there exists a seed temple created by the people of the water. The seed temple the sea temple contains a hidden treasure called the sea crown, but it remains undiscovered. The temple, the temple drifts through the vast, vast, vast of the ocean, undetected, waiting, and waiting. Ash and Pikachu meet Elizabeth. That was her name. And it descended from the from, for the from for the people of the water. Learn about the legend. They also meet Jackie or Jack. A Pokemon Ranger on the on a secret mission to protect a Manaphy egg to find the Sea Temple as well. However, the Phantom plans to obtain the Sea Crown and take over the world. But first, he needs the Manaphy egg. Now Elizabeth, Ash, and friends help Jackie protect the egg to stop from the infernal pirate. But what? But what exactly is the Sea Crown? And how does Manaphy's mystery power connect it to the Sea Temple? Join Ash and friends for another exciting Pokemon movie adventure. And also, by the way, this is actually the longest Pokemon movie in history. That's for 105 minutes. Yep. 105 minutes. I still think it's technically the longest movie in Pokemon history. So anyway, let's go into detail about this movie and why it is overall my favorite. Oh, you Gen Three! Oh, you Gen Three lover! You only like you only like these movies because it was the first generation you really watched. Maybe that's the case. Maybe it's not. But let's get into it. All right. So the whole, round about the whole man of the thing, egg thing, when the Phantom attacks, my favorite moment in the movie. Is when they when they're fighting over the egg and it's just about to hatch, and then the Phantom gets his hands on it, and then Max jumps on top of him, and they all base I think they all basically try to jump on him. The egg falls out of everybody's hands, and it's and it's falling up, and it's about to crash to the ground. Where May does a leap of faith and gets it in her hands. That was definitely the that was definitely a cool moment. May do, do, doing a leap of faith to grab the egg before it fell on the floor, fell on the floor, fell, fell, fell on the floor and cracked. And then, of course, in true egg fashion, it hatched in her hands. Manaphy came out, and Manaphy saw her as its mother. Oh well, but as so with Manaphy now in May's hands, technically. Everybody wants wants a turn to hold it, and then I believe it's Elizabeth that points out the most obvious question, the most obvious thing ever. They all wanted to have a turn at carrying Manaphy, but then it came to a point where Manaphy wasn't enjoying being carried by other people, and when Elizabeth had her turn at holding it, she points out the obvious line saying, "Manaphy must prefer being with May." Hello? Isn't that obvious? It hatched in her hand. That's basic. That's basically what I was trying to say. That's basically it. I'm like, hello? It hatched in her hand, so of course she would want to be with the one that that, that was born. She would want to be with the person that, that was in her hand when it came out. So I kind of found that as, as a pretty stupid minor inconsistency there. And I'm like, yeah, no duh, it's so obvious. And then throughout their, their, their journey to the Sea Temple, Jackie is the type of guy who started to get very, very concerned. Started to get very concerned because May and Manaphy were getting really, really close. So, he tries to tell Ash, well, he does tell Ash, he tells Ash that he wants him to break away May and Manaphy. And Ash asks, why would I do that? And then, and then Jackie says, well, if Manaphy continues to get close to May, Manaphy would never would want to go back. And I'm thinking, how is this an issue? But yeah, it's a movie, so of course they had to to provide some way to prevent May from keeping this thing. So May ends up overhearing this conversation, 
She ends up wa waddling in, well not waddling, just walking on in, trying to explain the situation that she can handle the handle what she's doing. And then Jackie just just decides to go full on rage mode on her by by yelling and by yelling at her and telling her that Manaphy is not your Pokemon. Manaphy is the prince of the sea and it needs to stay with the sea temple. Okay, Patrick, is okay, Patrick, you gonna say anything? Well, what do you expect me to say? This guy was going all out on somebody who doesn't know anything about the Seed Temple. Oh, I get it! The reason why you like the movie is because you felt bad for May. She's one of your favorite characters. Yeah, that's besides the point. Yeah, May, I do like May. She, she was one of my favorite characters. But no, that is not the reason why I like the movie. I like the movie because she had an important role. That is why I like the movie. Some people might think, oh, I'm a hypocrite because I like certain movies because of certain things. But hey, what about you guys? Do you like certain movies because certain things happen? Or certain characters? Or certain people? Please, think about that before you say that to me. So, so, so then May ends up leaving the room, and she's crying. She, she starts crying when she leaves the room. Because Jackie completely just tore right through her, and Ash and Ash just really felt bad for her. It really did feel bad for her. And by the time they got to the Sea Temple, boy, that te boy, the temple really looked absolutely glorious or just incredibly nice. Because it looked really absolutely, it, it looked really cool. I really did, really did appreciate it. I really did appreciate its look. Very good. So then they confront the front door, and there was all this gibberish writing, and they didn't even understand it. And then the phantom, from out of nowhere, like an RKO, appears! And then he, and apparently he knows gibberish, apparently. Because there was all this gibberish writing they didn't understand. Apparently he knows gibberish. He knows exactly what the words say. And apparently he also knows how to open the door. He just turns his fingers around like this. You turn your fingers like this. And you turn two more, and you turn the little part, and then BAM! The door opens. Okay, it feels like he's already been here before, so what's the point? So, eventually, throughout the movie, then the Sea Temple starts corrupting, at some point. Gee, I wonder why. So everybody evacuates, except for May and, May and Ash, they don't evacuate, they go to see what's going on, and then, what do you know, the Phantom is grabbing the, grabbing the crystals from the crown, so then that way he can take them all for himself. And thanks to a Ash and May, they stop him. For, they stop him, and and he, and he falls off, falls off the ledge with one of the crystals intact. So they all take the crystals, put it back, put it back in, and there's one crystal missing because that fell, because that fell off. So they go looking for it along with Manaphy, and Ash finds it, and he sees one of Phantom's uh. Little thingies, those things that, that open doors and you can close them and lock people in them. I don't know what they call those things. Uh, I think it's like an escape pod. I think that's what that is. Ash didn't know how to work it, so he just... Well, he doesn't full-on grab May and then throws her in it. He just grabs her by the ant hand, he puts her in it gently. He puts her in it gently with Manaphy, closes it and then locks it. And he tells her, I'll be back. I will put this away. So then the water ends up getting really really high and it overflows the uh, escape pod which don't worry may and may, may and manaphy are still fine but then ash but considering that they're in a big ass temple ash had had a hard time breathing for air while he was while he was swimming so he eventually you know chokes himself out in the water and then may's just putting her hands like this while manaphy's leaning on her she's doing this begging and you know, doing the whole praying. I think she was like, I think she was like this, not like this. I think she was like this. She, she had her hands like this, praying, just, just praying, just randomly saying words. And then Manaphy just does this glowing, glowing thing. And then she just starts saying, Ash, I believe in you. Ash, I believe in you. Please, Ash, you can do it. And Ash just wakes up, and then he grabs the crystal, swims back, like, swims up like a bloody crazy man, and then dumps the, and dumps the crystal in. And then he and Ash also obtains really awesome powers, which I'll which I'll get to in a sec. The Seed Temple is saved. The water is all calmed down. Ash gets out. May sorry gets out of the escape pod, 
and, 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 and sees everything's returned to normal, but very concerned because Ash isn't coming back. Oh my god, another one of those little teasers that Ash is dead. And then, like, 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 a, like a snake from out of nowhere, the Phantom jumps on May and then grabs Manaphy and, and gets on that escape pod that she was in and flees the scene. And then May does her, then, then, then when May get, then, then May does her little Manaphy thing. <laughs> I kind of like that. She's like panicking that Manaphy got caught. And then Ash comes out of nowhere with all these, with, all, with this yellow aura flying around him and he's able to fly. He's not a Super Saiyan. He can somehow fly in some kind of water, water thing. I think that's what you get if you become the king of the sea or something. So, so, so with the help of the legendary Pokemon Kyogre. Yes, you can't have a movie without an awesome legendary Pokemon involved. Kyogre comes in, helps Ash. Ash grabs Manaphy. Kyogre and then the other water Pokemon all attack the Phantom, and and that is base and that is basically the end for the Phantom. Yeah, good good old Kyogre, such a great legendary Pokemon. And then they board the ship and they have to say goodbye to Manaphy. Mama, I love you. Mama, I love you. Manaphy says to May. And then May says, I love you too. And then, Ma and then Manaphy escapes, leaves the war, goes back to the temple, and everything is returned back to normal. So that is why this movie is overall my favorite movie and I like and I like the dis and I like the disc art too boy look how ser look how serious Ash looks look how worried May looks love the box art I mean seriously such a box art looks great the movie art looks great and I just completely messed up the DVD thing <laughs> I guess I'll fix that I guess I'll fix that so anyway guys that has been my top 10 top 10, top 5 movies of Pokemon, why I like them. Hope you all enjoyed it. Yeah, this is a long video, and I really hope you all enjoy. See you guys next time.